Welcome back to PSC Stack Byte. Today I want to introduce you to the PMP Carousel React Reusable Control. It is part of the PMP React Controls family and is a really useful one that you can use whenever you want to create a slideshow in your web parts or tabs in Teams and you want to render, for example, a picture with a description with the navigation buttons to move next and previously and to select uh, a specific item in the carousel. Whenever you will do that, you will also have uh, events uh, on uh, move next, uh, on move previous and on select. And you can fully customize the UI and the user experience uh, working with CSS uh, and configuration settings. So, like always, let me move to the demo and let me show you the carousel control in action. This is the official documentation page of the PMP Carousel React Reusable Control. Here you can find samples about how to use it and all of the details about the properties of the control. Here you can see the control in action. This is the demo web part that I created for this video. As you can see here, we have a carousel scrolling or making a slideshow across multiple images of a really nice Ferrari cars. If I hover on one of them, I will be able to see the details and the automatic slideshow will stop. If I will move away, the slideshow will start again. I can also click on the navigation buttons to move next or to move previous and I can select a specific item in the list of items that I'm showing through the slideshow. We can also uh, get events triggered when we click on the navigation buttons or when we click uh, on the uh, common buttons right here in the lower part of the UI. So how did I build this uh, uh, control and this web part? Well, first of all, in my SharePoint framework web part, I need to import the PMP, SPFX, Control, React, uh, and PM package in order to have uh, all of the PMP controls uh, available. Then, I created a web part and inside the web part I simply created a fake list of items where I defined every single item as made of the uh, SRC or the URL of the image that I want to render for the item, the title and description and the URL so that in case the user will click on an item, it, uh, the browser will be brought to the URL that I configured in this uh, uh, specific interface. So, in my web part, uh, I simply create a list of items which you could eventually download from an external API or from a SharePoint list uh, or from wherever you like. And then I provide to my React component uh, the list of carousel elements as one of the input properties. Now, the interesting part comes when we talk about the implementation of the React component that is rendering my web part. In fact, here I have to import the carousel component from the PMP React controls and eventually I'm also importing other types that I will use uh, in order to configure, to properly configure my carousel. I also import the image fit type from Office UI Fabric so that I will be able to configure how the images will behave while rendering inside the carousel. Then, in the render method of my React component, I simply map the elements that I've got through the properties of my React component into an array of iCarousel image props, which is a type defined, as you can see right here, in the PMP React controls, and which defines the outline of every single item rendered in the carousel. The uh, iCarousel image props is made of image search, title, description, and URL, as you can imagine, plus the show details on hover, which will instruct the carousel to show or not to show the details on hover on a single item, and then I can configure the behavior uh, to use when rendering the image, and for example here the image fit cover means that I'm going to use the whole area, eventually uh, uh, making a cropping of the image in order to make it uh, properly fit the area that I defined. Then the actual carousel component is defined in the HTML 
of my Riyadh component, uh, which will render the web part. And here you can see a bunch of properties that we can configure. For example, we can configure where do we want uh, the uh, buttons, uh, if we want them on top uh, of the image or just below the image, uh, what kind of behavior we want to have for the buttons uh, that we are going to display. We can configure custom CSS styles uh, for the content uh, and for the buttons, uh, and those styles uh, are defined in my SCSS file uh, under the section of my uh, web part component. Uh, here you can see I forced the carousel to have a 8 of 400 pixel and a width of 500 pixel and I configure the carousel buttons on the right and on the left to move next and move previous to be 32 pixel in width. Then if I go back to my uh, real component we can see that I configure the carousel to be infinite so it will continuously play the slideshow. I provide, and this is a very important information indeed, I provide the array of iCarousel image props as the element property of my carousel. I can configure the pose on hover, so when I will hover with the mouse, the scrolling, the slideshow will pose. I can configure this uh, interval of the slideshow, which is in milliseconds, so now I'm configuring it to uh, take four seconds of time to show every single item, and then I can even intercept the on move next, on move brief clicked event, and the on select, which will be triggered when I will click on a button item in the below area of the carousel. So I can intercept those events, and I will always receive the index of the item which will be shown on the move next or on the move previous, and when the user will click on select, I will be able to know which item the user selected. So this is really simple to use, and it allows us to create really powerful user experiences with a slideshow uh, control, rendering items in a nice and really friendly way. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. And remember, subscribe to the channel. Thank you.